450 kilo on here in this little go kart. That's right. <laughs> 450 kilo on the <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm John August with, and um, we're at the uh, Sydney Electric Vehicle Expo. Yeah. I'm, here with, I'm here with Bruno and Damien and they're going to talk about electric vehicles and, and gadgets and power and stuff like yeah. that. So I'll, I'll leave these two gentlemen to it. Alright, alright, we've got a microphone here. <laughs> I hope it, hopefully it's not clipping. Hi Damien, so Hello, what, you what you got here man? <laughs> right, so... This is a hill climb by car, isn't it? Like something really powerful, is it? Yep, so last year we were running a, a Hooper with two AC50 motors. This year what we're running is a 450 kilowatt fully unlocked Tesla setup. 450 kilowatt here in this little go-kart. That's right, <laughs> 450 kilos apart. <laughs> I'm Phil, uh, I've st I started motor racing when I was 16. Uh, about 10 years ago I started competing in hill climb. Then about five years ago, Damien helped me convert my Group 2C sports car to full electric. We took all the traditional running gear out of the Group 2C car and replaced it with uh, a couple of AC50 motors and Curtis controllers and uh, a lot of uh, little 18650 cells. Uh, recently we had a run around Wakefield Park and uh, we're actually a uh, second or so quicker than the uh, GT3 Porsches that were running that day. But now uh, we want to go faster, significantly faster, hence the reason for building this vehicle. And I think we're, we're making a pretty good start on a, a much higher performance level in the vehicle. Alright, what we got here, man? So, this is the big Tesla motor, so it's the large drivetrain. So, this is the motor, this is the inverter, this is the reduction drive. Yep. So, then you still don't have the, the, the drive shaft here. You didn't, didn't get a chance to get the drive shaft in. This is flipped upside down. That's I've got right. the same drivetrain, this is flipped upside down. That's right. What's the reason you got this? So like the that? reasoning behind that is to increase the uh, handling characteristics. We needed the weight in front of the center of the rear wheels. Oh, so oh yeah, so yeah, the rear wheels, so this is right. right in front. Yep. Awesome. So in this instance, the way to do this is actually to flip it upside down. We then need to crack the case. We need to run an external oil pump and reservoir. Um, because uh, you can't just spin them because they can't run the, the oil pump backwards. All right. And by the time you flip it over, then the sump actually is here for the oil pickup. Oh. So you actually have to bypass it completely. All right. So what do you do with the vents here? Like because the, the top vents are facing down now. So how you literally you, you literally just um, run them up to the top. Mm. Having the weight behind the rear wheels would have been very bad for handling. So by moving the weight to the front and low, um, it means we've been able to kick up, kick up sooner with the diffuser to actually create more downforce. When, you, when you're designing a car, if you want good handling characteristics, you want all of the weight in between the wheels and as close to the center line as possible. Okay, so you get the driver, uh, like weight and like battery weight, motor That's weight, right. so you kind of like just try to balance around it. The, the reality is, is we should have a fairly decent side to side split, it should almost be perfect. We'll have about a 60-40 um, uh, rear to front weight split, distribution, yeah. that's right, and then under braking you end up with a 50-50 through the corner. Oh yeah, because yeah, the weight shifts. That's correct. <laughs> awesome, so, And we're running the same, same sort of style with a, a monoshock at the rear. Um, but basically this allows the vehicle to sit flat in the back end um, oh, right. because so of the no amount of, gonna... that's right, because of the amount of downforce we'll probably have both boots on the ground at all times. That's amazing race tyre. That's size it. Of this, man. That's Ooh. it. 12 inch wide Avons. Oh, grippy, eh? <laughs> yep. So we only get about three months, if that, depending on how many runs. <laughs> Dashboard thing. So basically this is the EV control unit that we got from um, EV West and basically this controls all of the parameters and setting in the Tesla motor. Um, so basically they've, they've gone to the effort to actually have a plug and play scenario where basically this plugs directly into the inverter um, and it is one literally cable. one cable into the inverter, one plug into the back of this, a wire to your throttle, put your two power wires in and away you go. Happy days. Happy days. And you, sh you can control all the parameters from inside of that um, and it literally is just your touch screen slide and play. That's awesome because the race cars they normally have like even a Formula One car they have like a on the steering wheel they have they, under like 20 buttons and things and like yep. LEDs and things. Yep. So this actually makes life simpler. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know if you're going to be 
No, no, you, 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 oh, you won't really have time to go changing too many of those just things. Just set it and forget it. Set it and forget it? That's you might right. be controlling what, like regen up and down? No, not really, because at the end of the day, it will mess with the biasing. Um, so the brake biasing knob is just here. Mm. Um, so basically, you can adjust your, your front right. to rear bias. Your, your regen will actually cause you a little bit of drama with your, your biasing. Mm. Um, Set and forget. That's right. You just run, do a run, like a feel like this, yep. Yeah. That's it. Oh, so. yeah. Life is much simpler with electric. That's it. No gear shifting, no, no, like, oh, man. No, <laughs> push and go because the throttle is all about torque control. Oh, man. Woo. <laughs> uh, deals with all of the parameters and settings that are in the inverter in the Tesla. Um, that's what comes from EV West, and they basically have, have worked. 450 kilowatts. 450 kilowatts, and a lot of power, man. A thousand newton meters, as far as I know. <laughs> so. So the chassis is supposed to handle all this. Yeah. So, power, right? so the, the, the numbers are okay, right? Yeah. So we we've probably over-engineered it a little a little more than we need to uh, in the event that we end up doing normal track runs. It'll spend most of its life on a hill climb. Um, hence the uh, remove as much weight as we actually can. Look at these tires, man. They're awesome, man. Eh? That's it. Right, so what we got here at the front? So this looks like a like amazing proper racing shocks, like this Formula One tires, Okay. Right? So basically what we've got is we've got a uh, shock absorber that's made out of magnesium and titanium. Yeah, it sounds um, really cheap, yep. eh? Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> budget. Was. Yeah, that's it. Low, low budget build. You said Benetton. Um, Benetton, that's right. So it came out of old Benetton F1. So basically then we come down here, to, which is your your um, torsion bar rocker scenario. Which All right, basically so it goes like this. That's right. So this goes backwards and forwards takes the major shock load this way. Oh. We have a rising rate on our rockers, which basically gives you the ability to get down to your level of aero, and then your suspension travel comes back. Aero? So hang on, are you gonna have fairing here? So we, we will have uh, quite a lot of downforce on the front, quite a lot of downforce So you're gonna have rear. wings here, wings there, and right. all big this power? Uses, big big pods down the side to create downforce. Yeah, 450 kilos there. Yeah. <laughs> so basically, if we need any more tuning ability out of that, then basically what we end up doing is running individual dampeners per side. All oh, right, so you can have one That's here, right. one there, and different, different part here as well? Uh, we don't actually need to change anything that. We can do the tuning through the... Oh, the right, yeah, yeah, yeah. If we yeah, find yeah. that we need a heavier torsion bar, um, then we just basically replace this unit. Oh. All of that scenario lightens up quite substantially, so sway bar becomes extremely small. Um, all of the components are minimised as much as possible. So hang on, so did you weld this thing yourself? Yeah. Are you a welder? So, so I did most of the chassis, well I did all of the chassis, <laughs> um, and quite a few of the components. Uh, Phil, the owner and driver of the car, um, he did the suspension arms. Are you a um, TIG welding? Yes, TIG welding. So, Beautiful, Schmidt. Yep. Uh, is this all like, well, like steel? So this, this is all chromoly tubing. Yeah, um, this is, this is uh, ERW RHS in a, in a latticework configuration with uh, aluminium sheeting. So stress structure exactly the same as you would if you had a clubman race car. So space frame chassis all the way through. <laughs> Everything has to be A1 when you're dealing with someone who's travelling at 260 kilometres an hour. Safety is everything. Oh yeah. Right, what we got here. So this is the battery compartment, right? So yep. nice fridge. Look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, at, stainless, yeah. at the moment we um, we didn't have time to have the, the top finished off, so it will actually have um, uh, active cooling for the BMS. Oh. The reason we went with the stainless steel box is because it can contain the fire of a lipo. Uh, we don't expect to have any problems because we have over spec the battery to be able to dish out far more current than the motor can ever, ever deliver. The lipo pack that's in here generates very, very little heat so we don't actually need to cool it. Uh, we will actually have a heating pad underneath to get it up to temperature for racing. So we sourced the cells. Um, we had Chris Jones actually assemble the, the actual module. Chris Jones the legend man, the best right. battery packs ever. 96 modules for uh, battery and BMS. Battery and so BMS? Yep, I work for right. battery. <laughs> so we'll be, be running the Watch One 4. We've gone with individual uh, cell monitors. So Blockmons? Uh, Blockmon uh, M8. M8, that's right. A battery that can take 2,800 amps is not going to be running hot. Uh, no, that's, that's the thing. It's going to so be I, running cool. So I have a tendency to always try and spec the continuous rating of the battery to the peak of whatever I'm using. Um, this has a 
tendency to have me not really have battery issues. Yeah. So the reality is, is this this will pull about 1,400 amps out of the actual battery. Whoa. Um, this is well capable of handling that, and we only produce something something ridiculous like 150 watts of excess heat. Wow. So, eh? So why you have this dent here? Like, what's so this? We inset the actual lid of it because by the time it's got the venting in it, the easiest way to control a, a battery issue and a critical fail is to take a 20 litre bucket of water, pour oh, it into the top of the tray. Looks like a container. Yeah. That's right. Instantly floods the battery. Oh. Battery becomes safe. People think it's a crazy idea to put water in a battery in case of a fire, right? Water, yep. right? Yep. So it's just like. That's a stupid idea. But Powder extinguishers have a tendency to ignite when an arc is present. What happens when you put the water in is it does two things. Not only thermal does it runaway. thermal runaway, it cools it down and it also discharges the battery because it shorts the battery. Yes. So it not only drains the power out but at the same time controls the heat. Yeah, I learned with like Danny Ripper to say, oh no, we squeeze water inside the battery. Like, no, not inside, like through all cells. That's like, right. That sounds crazy. It's like, no, no, no. That's the only thing. You just keep on pumping. Like, That's get a right. hose and just keep on pumping. Keep it going. So, up the back here, we have all the contactors. Um, so, all this. Uh, all the power, high voltage power, contactors. Power. And the only way to access this, this here is to remove this and switch the isolation switches before okay. you can get into the module so, awesome. so you're never actually being able to work on it at 400 volts. So if you want to buy something like that, how much it will cost me? So like... From design to hitting the track with, the, with everything on it, we're basically looking at component wise, you've got a, basically $100,000 worth of vehicle, 150 built. But the labour, yeah. Yeah, that's right. The labour, there was just on the chassis alone, there was about 105 hours, but the reality is, is there's a lot of design that has to actually go into it first to get your geometry right for what you're doing. Plus, so how long did you make this, like how much time did you spend making so currently, to now, like Currently to this point, we're at about three weeks. Three um, weeks? Yeah, three weeks. Did you build so, this in three weeks? Yeah. No. This got in the trailer at uh, the morning we had to bring it here. That's another world record, man. <laughs> three weeks. Yeah, so three weeks. Um, what? Uh, since we actually had designed the chassis to go under a different body, um, if we had to do it again, we probably wouldn't do it quite the same way. Uh, because of that, we didn't actually have any of the, um, the shock design or anything like that set up in CAD before we started, so that did take up a decent amount of time trying to work out the logistics of what we were going to do. So, I mean, this is what I do, this is my job, you want a race car, come to me. So how do we get you? How do we find you? Well, I just started a, a web page called EV Motorsport Australia, you can contact Damien through Drift Tech Electric Racing, uh, and Bruno, yeah. yeah. Um, just, just, just putting it out there, Bruno. Now you have to, because now it's on, <laughs> now it's on the web. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh. Wow, man, that feels awesome. <laughs> Missing the steering wheel at the moment. That's how you steer. Front control. Yeah. No, we, we literally got it rolling 10 a.m. before we had to have it in the trailer to come here. Awesome. So. Oh, yeah. All the stuff there. Yeah, cool. Yep. Oh man, I gotta come to Canberra. Sorry, I have to drive down and see this car, man. Oh yeah! You're gonna send me some videos to upload here, huh? Absolutely. <laughs> Look at this beast, man. That looks like a mini Formula One car, man. Whoa! Damien, you're gonna be best friends, man. Thanks, Bruno. <laughs> if you like my channel, please support my work on Patreon. One dollar, two dollars, five dollars.